You're listening to the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Since 1877, Australia and England have been battling it out against each other in Test cricket. Over that time, many players have had the honour of captaining their country in an Ashes series or in an Ashes test. There have been 42 captains to captain Australia in Ashes cricket and 55 captains to captain England in Ashes cricket. For the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast historical series, we are looking back at all the players who have captained Australia and England in Ashes cricket. In this historical series episode, we are looking back at the Ashes captains who captained Australia in the 1920s. Warwick Armstrong was a huge figure in Australian cricket. A fine batsman that scored 2,863 runs at 38.68, with six centuries, highest score of 159 not out from 50 test matches, in a career that spanned from 1902 to 1921. He was known as the Big Ship, a name given to him because of his weight. At the start of his career, he was a slim man, but by the time he came to England in 1921, he weighed 139 kilograms, or 22 stone. He was not renowned for happily accepting the umpire's decision. The England batting legend Jack Hobbs once described an incident in which he referred to Armstrong as nasty and unsportsmanlike. In 1912, Armstrong refused to tour England because of a dispute with the Australian authorities about how the team was selected. His career featured many disagreements, often about money. Once fielding on the boundary, a newspaper blew from the crowd onto the pitch. Armstrong picked it up and started reading. He became the 15th Australian Test captain. His Ashes captaincy reign spanned from 1920 to 1921 and led Australia in two Ashes series. In that time, he led Australia to two Ashes series victories in 1920-21 and 1921. In 10 tests, he won eight, lost none and drawn two. His Ashes record saw him score 2,172 runs at 35.03 with four centuries, highest score of 158 in 42 Ashes tests between 1902 to 1921. He captained Australia to eight successive test victories over England at the start of the 1920s. He became the first captain in the Ashes to lead a side to a 5-0 Ashes whitewash, a feat achieved again by two more Australian captains, in Ricky Ponning in 2006-07 and Michael Clark in 2013-14. Herbie Collins was a batsman that played for Australia during the 1920s. He played 19 test matches, scoring 1,352 runs at 45.06, with four centuries and a higher score of 203, which was against South Africa at Johannesburg in 1921. He was also a member of Warwick Armstrong's Great Australian Team in England, in 1921, that won 5-0. He missed two test matches of that series due to a broken thumb. A bookmaker by profession, he was widely known as Horseshoe Collins, by reason of his good fortune in connection with racing and in winning the toss at cricket. He became the 16th Australian Test Captain, taken over from Rorick Armstrong. His Ashes captaincy reign spanned from 1924 to 1926 and led Australia in two Ashes series. In that time, he led Australia to one Ashes series victory in 1924-25 and lost one series in 1926. In eight tests, he won four, lost two and drawn two. His Ashes record saw him score 1,012 runs at 38.92 with three centuries, highest score of 162 in 16 Ashes tests between 1920 to 1926. Warren Bardsley was one of the greatest left-handed batsmen produced by Australia. Only two of his countrymen, Sir Donald Bradman and Lindsay Hassett, surpassed his record of 53 centuries. 29 of them scored in England. In first-class matches, he mainly played in the 1900s, in a test career that spanned from 1909 to 1926. He played 41 test matches, scoring 2,464 runs at 40.47 with six centuries and a high score of 193 not out. He became Australia's 17th Test Captain and took over the captaincy during the third and fourth tests of the 1926 Ashes series as he was Vice-Captain under Captain Herbie Collins. 
In the third test at Headingley and the fourth test at Old Trafford that Barnsley took over as captain, led Australia to a drawn match in both test matches. Australia went on to lose the 1926 Ashes Series 1-0 in the best of five. Bardsley's high score of 193 not out came in the second test of the 1926 Ashes at Lords. It was his third test century which he carried his bat through an innings lasting over six and a half hours. No higher individual score had at, the, at that time been registered in a test match at Lords. His Ashes record saw him score 1,487 runs at 33.04 with three centuries, high score of 193 not out in 30 Ashes tests between 1909 to 1926. Jack Rada was a batsman that played for Australia during the 1920s. In a test career that spanned from 1920 to 1929, he played 20 test matches, scoring 1,394 runs at 51.62 with three centuries and a high score of 201 not out. He became Australia's 18th Test captain. His Ashes captaincy reign spanned from 1928 to 1929 and led Australia to one Ashes series. In that time, he led Australia to an Ashes series defeat in 1928-29. In five tests, he won one, lost four and draw none. His Ashes record saw him score 1,060 runs at 44.16 with two centuries, high score of 201 not out, in 17 Ashes tests between 1920-1929. The 1928-29 Ashes series was to be Ryder's last ever series as Australian captain, and he played his final ever test match at the MCG during the fifth test. Following the crushing Ashes defeat in 1928-29 as captain, the Australian selectors didn't consider Ryder for the 1930 Ashes series in England. Hence, his test career was over. He continued to play for his state of Victoria in the Sheffield Shield until 1931-32. Then he captained an unofficial Australian side on a tour of India in 1935-36. After his playing days, he became an Australian selector from 1946 to 1970. When he passed away in April of 1977, he was the oldest Australian test cricketer. In our next historical series episode, we are looking back at the Ashes captains who captained Australia in the 1930s.